What's going on, everybody? CSL Podcast here, Rodney Smith, aka Heavy Hooks. And today, you're going to see the interview I did with Cam Stevens, one of my all time favorite teammates, one of my all time favorite players in college sports. Uh, Cam attended Purdue University and in 1999, as a freshman in the NCAA tournament, Boston Garden hits a game winning shot against Texas in the corner to help Purdue advance in the NCAA tournament. Yo, Cam Stevens was an excellent player. After he left Purdue, he went on to play for UNC Charlotte. Now, I love rebounding because it is something I never could do well. I wasn't a great rebounder, so I always respected those that could. And Cam is one of the best rebounders I ever seen. Now, when he went to the uh, UNC Charlotte, let me tell you how great of a rebounder he was. <laughs> he only played uh, one year there, right? But he ended up with the same amount of rebounds and points. He scored 248 points, and he grabbed 248 rebounds. 248 points, 248 rebounds <laughs> grabbed. That's how great of a rebounder he was. Uh, you always need those guys on your team because you're always going to miss. But if you got somebody that can get that board, you got a better chance of winning. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this interview I did with Cam Stevens. He's a great guy. He went through some struggles. Uh, he had a child while in college, and he had to balance uh, family life and college life uh, along with school and playing basketball and all these other commitments you have when you play uh, Division One basketball. So sit back, enjoy this interview I did with the great Cam Stevens. All right, welcome to CSL Podcast. I got a very special guest today, one of my favorite players, Cam Stevens. For people that don't know, CSL stands for Chess Sports Life. And I figured out that there are strategies in both chess and sports that we can use to make ourselves more successful. So I like talking to players and coaches to see what strategies they've used in their lives to help them be successful. Uh, break the podcast up into four sections, the preseason, regular season, all-star break, and the postseason. And as you know, Cam, the preseason is all about you developing yourself for the regular season. So we want to know about Cam. What are you up to today? Whatever you want to share with us, tell us about Cam's life now. Oh man, I'm I'm blessed, man. I'm just uh just a regular dude, you know, after years and years of playing ball, you got to come back to civilian life and uh reground yourself, find yourself, figure out what's the next step. So man, I'm a I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather. <laughs> oh, you a grandfather? A grandfather, man. It's wow. crazy. It's still, still crazy to say that. For real. Congrats. How old? Thank you. Um, my oldest daughter is 25. I have two granddaughters. Uh, my oldest daughter named is Lakeisha. So my first granddaughter name is Lakeisha, her name's sake. And then the second one is Lakia. So they're three and one. So man, I'm, that's I'm, I'm, awesome. I'm Paul Paul. Paul Paul. <laughs> that's what I call my grandfather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that's dope, man. I forgot the other question I ask every guest is do you play chess? If so, who taught you? If not, what's your favorite card game or board game? No, I don't. I never uh, played chess. I never got around to it. My family, we grew up uh, when I was younger, they played backgammon. Um, mm, do you know how to play that? It's been a while, but I, 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 I think, you know, after. A few rounds of it, I can get back into it. It's been it's been a while, but I know that was big with my uncles growing up. But we probably play spades. Uh, probably be the biggest thing we play. Yep, me too. That's what my family playing. My grandparents played that backgammon, but they never taught me backgammon. Yeah, we. I learned when I was younger, man. I want to say like twelve or thirteen, and you know, just generational wise, it's it's not something that's that's around anymore. But uh, that was just something that. You know, family get together, so just sitting around all of my uncles play. So we learn how to play that. I've always been a a numbers guy, so that's something that I enjoy playing growing up. Okay, that's dope. All right, we'll go into the regular season now. Cam, how did you get into basketball, man? How'd you get introduced to playing basketball? Uh I think like everybody else, you see somebody playing. My uncle Andre was probably the most uh 
influential growing up for me. He was the most influenced. I uh, watched him play at Southside, my alma mater, and um, just fell in love with the game from watching, you know, Magic, Dr. J, the Pistons, you know, when everybody used to have those the world champion T-shirts with the cartoon characters, you know, I always, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always yeah. wanted, wanted to be on one of those or, or, or just, just, just the thrill of the game. And so I think my Uncle Andre is the one who got me started. And we used to play, uh, me and my cousin Nate, man, we used to play uh, hanger ball. We'd get a pair of socks, ball them up, put a hanger over the doorway. And, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old school, you know. So it, it was that. Then we graduated to, like, the Nerf hoops. And then, okay. uh, you know, we, uh, I, you know, I can say this now, we were young, but we, uh, we couldn't afford it, man. So we we went around and stole people rims and put them up on the telephone pole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then uh, my grandmother, uh, Lizzie Stevens, rest in, rest in peace, her and my grandfather, Big Sam, uh, they they bought us a rim, put it in the ground in the backyard. And man, that's that's where I think my game, it just it just took off. It, I, it became a lot more serious. We were uh, we're just out there every day, all day, man, playing ball. Man, that's dope. Talk about your AAU experience and some of the great players you played with and against. Uh, AAU, man, it was... It was crazy, you know. It's not like like it is now, where you know when we played, you could only have I think it was two or three teammates on your team, um, and it was right after it, you had to wait to the summer. Now these kids, mm -hmm. they play all year, all year, uh, all year. I'm not a big fan of that. I kind of feel like you know you need to be able to have your regular season and, and, and separate um, from AAU, but now you got teams kids playing for their school through the week and then AU on the weekend. So yep. I'm a little impartial to that part, but AU, man, it, it was like, AU was hollow ground, man. AU, AU is where you find out who you were outside of your city. You know, when you mm -hmm. find, you know, you may thought you were good, then you go to an AU tournament, you see a guy your size or bigger doing things that guards do. And then, you know, I always wanted to emulate and take from, I don't care who it was, everybody game that I came across. I always want to take a piece of somebody's game and, and add it to mine. So AU was a was an eye eye opener for me. Um just letting me know where I was at on a state level, then you know, regional level, then national level. So AU was 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 everything for me. Um here in Indiana, you know, you ran across the guys from Gary, uh Who'd you play with? Who were some of the top guys you played with? Played the guy, top guys I played with, uh, Jamal. You know, we were we were the uh we were on the indie all-star team. So it's me, Jamal, Luke Wrecker, um, everybody. I think maybe 10 or 11 people on our AAU team ended up being all-stars. Uh Big Charlie from Angola. Um, like I said, Jamal, we had I want to say Damon Bruce. I don't know if D. Bruce was on the team. I think he may have been on my Indiana Force team from Gary. Uh, Bobby Smith was on my first AU team. Legend out of uh, East Chicago, Gary, Chicago area. Um, like I said, man, we we had some some guys that mm -hmm. that, that were amazing. Yeah. You know? And then who's some top people you played against in AAU? Man, I think probably the best. I've seen in AU was probably BD Baron Davis. Baron you got to was, play against BD where? Where did y'all play? Uh, against? We played against them cats out in Nationals in Oklahoma City. Mm. Uh, that Baron man, he he was some different. I think we had him in check the first half, and then I think he may erupted for thirty seven or thirty eight in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Larry, that was a Larry, big guard. Yeah, yeah. Larry Hughes. We ran to the mm. guys in St. Louis, Corleone Young. Uh oh, yeah, people forgot about him, Corleone Young. Yeah. Yeah. He was cold. Yep, yeah, that's the bomb weaver from Ohio. Yep. Um, so it it we ran a, uh that class of ninety seven, man. I I would say arguably it was one of the best classes, you know. We we had some dogs that that went on to be great NBA stars, superstars, uh T Mac. All those guys came out the same year, but yep. it, it, we had a great run, great time. Uh, like I said, some of the guys that I played AU with, college ball, are some of my better friends today. 
That's good, man. Uh, did you ever play against Chris White? Chris White. That name sound familiar. Where where was he from? He went to, uh, he's from Indianapolis. Went to Northwest. Uh, uh-uh, I I don't recall yeah, how old he is. Okay. Yeah, I don't know uh, how old he is. Now I wanted to bring up Luke Recker. I knew you played with him because when we played IU, he was starting to get off. And then did you switch on him, or did Coach tell you to guard Luke because he had made a little run at first, and then you got on him. Uh, you know, I was, uh, at that time there, even though it was brief, I was, you know, I started a few games if I recall, but I was always like six man to come in and kind of tame or whoever, whoever was getting off, whether it was, uh, Brandon Haywood, all those guys when we were in New York, you know, the big men, or if it was mm-hmm. guard when we know yep. Posey, were, you played Xavier Posey was going off. And so it was just one of those things, man, with my game, I was so versatile you know i had uh i didn't feel right i had you know i had sat out a year so my my timing and off is the game was off but uh one thing that my high school coach greg taylor always told me that you know your effort as far as rebounding and defense that should always be there so that was just something that i i took pride in man and just whatever i could do to be on the court you know i think a lot of kids get misconstrued on what you know how important playing time is sometimes you you got to do what it takes and earn your keep and, and go out there and do what you can to get on the court and then you know your offense to come in so for me it was like whatever i had to do to be on the court if it was trying to be the best defensive player best rebounder you know if i had to set a screen or, or whatever mm-hmm. i just wanted to be on the court you know that's what that's what we there for we there to play and it just always, you know, worked out that I um I had success just just from my effort of just playing hard. For real. Talk about your high school coach, man, and what he did for your development. Man, I um Coach Taylor, man, Coach Greg Taylor, he's a twin, his brother Craig Taylor. Um over the years I've grown a lot more closer to the head coach Greg, but both of them were very instrumental in my game as far as uh Coach Craig was a big man coach, and you know from the mic and moves, the up and under, the drop step, your footwork. <laughs> before we knew what footwork was, but Coach Coach Greg, man, uh, I call him Dad. You know, at that time, my father wasn't in my life. Um, I had a lot of great men from the community. My uncles, my grandfather was probably the best man ever. You know, and I know I'm biased because uh, everybody has somebody positive in their life, but. Coach Taylor, man, he um, he taught me how to be a student. He taught me how to be a student of the game. He taught me how to be a, a ball player, a leader on and mm-hmm. off the court. Uh, he always was in my ear about being a role model, being a mentor. Um, it's funny, you know, I, I watch a lot of the Marvel stuff with my with my son and all that, you know, and you always hear it's cliche say, um, you know, great responsibility. You know, you have great, great talents, great powers re- requires great responsibility. And coaches mm-hmm. always tell me that um, me being Cam, I don't, I won't understand who I am just from my, my personality and who I was and what I meant to others around me. But showing up first, leaving last, um, being the hardest worker, you know, coach was very big on your best player should be your hardest worker, you know, whereas a lot of times today I feel like a lot of these coaches coddle their best player and then punish everybody else. And coach always said, if I get on you, whether it's film or workouts, he said, you may be going a hundred percent, you know, you may have, may not have no flaws on film, but if I am able to chastise you and hold you account more accountable, I can reach that 12th man on the team. So it won't be a problem. And so that was something that that just kind of stuck with me throughout, you know, college, uh, semi-pro pro uh, career overseas was just, you know, being a leader, being being responsible for myself and, and the team. So that was something I think I owe the most to coach. I mean, as far as just, just mental part, but physically, man, you know, coach would pick me up, Arby's in hand, donuts, orange juice and get to school workouts uh study table before class um just, and then just being the best student i could be it was just something that he always you know he believed in me when i didn't believe in myself i didn't you know i didn't think i was that good until 
I got older and I started seeing the, the fruits of my labors of how much work I put in. It was like, oh, okay, you know, I may have something here. Mm-hmm. Man, that's dope, man. It's excellent to hear. And uh, let's move on to why, why did you choose Purdue first? And then why did you choose Charlotte next? Uh, Purdue, at that point, man, it was, I think it came down to – Purdue, Cincinnati, Kentucky. That was right after Kentucky won the national championship. Um, and then, like I said, my freshman year, I think coach got a hold of me a little bit after second semester where I really bought in. So my first semester, I kind of messed up, and that put me behind the eight ball. So moving forward, man, I, I never went to any of the Adidas camps. I never went to any of the Nike camps, and I was still ranked you know, top 12 in the country, just, just off, uh, hard work. But, um, my first choice was Kentucky, but Kentucky, when I found out that I was going to, uh, prop 48 Kentucky, the SEC didn't take props. Oh, okay. Yeah. So honestly, uh, Kentucky would have been my, my first overall choice. And then, um, after that, it was between Purdue and Cincinnati. And I chose Purdue ultimately just from the ties for Fort Wayne. Okay. Uh, Eugene, Eugene Parker. Eugene Parker. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, Eugene Parker, uh, Walter Jordan. Um, so those those were my heroes. And Eugene was is my cousin. Rest in peace was my cousin. Okay. Uh, um, and then it was just, you know, there's a lot of ties uh, we're here in Fort Wayne with Purdue. You know, we've had uh, – Countless players go there. Uh, Raphael, who's on Big Ten Network now, he's from Fort yeah. Wayne. I coach Ray, I coach Raphael a little bit when I came back at at Southside. Um, you had Candace Crawford, you had Al Eldridge, uh, Roosevelt Barnes. <laughs> I'm trying. I, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's, the list it's a goes lot, on a and on. Ties. Yeah, I mean, not just basketball, but football too. We had a couple guys from uh, this area go there for football. But yeah. Purdue, man, Purdue was just. Just I feel like part of our community growing up. Okay. And then why Charlotte after that? Charlotte, man. Um I uh I didn't take many visits. I took um I think it was like maybe Louisville, Memphis. That's when they had Coach Cal. And um just when I went down there, man, I really – I didn't even play with those guys like because I had – you know, once you go through recruiting and the type of player I was, I could play and mess with anybody. You know, yeah. my type of game, I can I can fit and play with anybody. But I think the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, I had some regrets at Purdue. Um, I was kind of, you know, insecure with myself. So I really didn't hang out with the guys at Purdue when I was there. You know, it was practice, and that, that year that I sat out, me and Jamal was close, but the year I played, um, I kind of felt like everybody kind of did their own thing, and, I, you know, I'm not going to blame anybody else. Uh, me and my wife were just talking about it the other day, but I didn't separate um, the camaraderie with the competition because, you know, even though we were on the same team, we were still competing for that playing time. Right. And so I kind of had that grudge on me was like, okay, these, they my teammates, but you know, we competing for playing time. So like I said, just being young, man. So when, once I got to Charlotte, I said, I want to make this about, you know, the team. So if I can, if I can hang with these guys off the court, I know I can play with anybody. So once I got down there, man, everybody was cool. The city was beautiful. Um, and then coach Luce, coach Luce was very, uh, Bobby Luce was very, uh, he was a player's coach, very high IQ as far as analytics and ex mm. explaining and, and, and helping you visualize the game plan in the game. So they were okay. just all those things that. So that was completely opposite of her too. <laughs> not, not, not really. Not, I mean, it was, but it wasn't, but it's like I said, as, as you go through things as, as a Freshman, you know, I set out my first year because of academics. Then um, I went there and played. And, you know, Coach Katie never take nothing away from him, Hall of Fame coach. Um, mean Gene was was very intense. But he was old school. You know, you had to earn, you had to earn your key from a freshman to a senior. You know, the freshmen and the seniors were treated totally different. different so yeah. some, of those, some of those things, as, as long as, I mean, as, 
including me having a kid at a young age, I didn't understand Coach Katie's message. You know, I kind of took a lot of things personal. Um, mm -hmm. We all do. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But growing and going through that year of junior college, then having that opportunity to have my recruiting back open, Charlotte was more of, I, I felt like my style, more up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. Conference Conference USA, I would say, was more of my style. Big Ten was more grinded out. Tough, tough, and you know, hard nosed defense. And Conference USA was a mix of both. Uh, to me, the ACC and the Big Ten was very athletic, strong, defensive minded uh, conference. So Charlotte was just an opportunity, man, for me to go down there and kind of show what I could do more. Yeah, and you did, man. That was, how did it feel to take them to the tournament, man? Uh, it was great, man. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, we didn't, I, we never won, you know, just like. But that, to get there. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, uh, we made what sweet 16 that year at, uh, Purdue. Like you said, yeah. I hit that shot against Texas. Uh, that year was crazy. We went what 11 and one in preseason. Then big yeah. 10, I think we, big 10, I think we and went. We dropped a lot. Yeah. yeah. We <laughs> six and 10 and big 10. And then we were we were blessed with the Big Ten being so strong that year. I think we got nine or ten teams. Ten, in. Yeah, I think ten, I think. And we we regrouped, um, and we made a run in the tournament. So yeah. well, hold on, so, stop and, right there. Hold on, gotta, hold on. We got to stop right there. So this is the all-star break, and uh, we're going to come back to what you said because it's connected to what I'm about to show. So during the all-star break, whoever my guest is, it's my chance to give them their flowers and their props. So I'm going to share my screen, Cam, and this is for you, man. All right, here we go. Cam Stevens, you know I'm the best. Number one player, ain't never been less. Cam Stevens, you know I'm the best. Number one player, ain't never been less. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no question about who is the best. I prefer Wayne above all the rest. Gotta teach them they slow above neck. Officially haters, I'm giving the tech. Flagrantly my elbow, I put in a chest. Grab a rebound, score, and I flex. Head and shoulders above all the rest. Foot on their neck, so I press. Forever on top, so now they depressed. Gotta teach them a lesson to top it, respect. The goofies in back, no need to address. Clowns in the back, they ain't passing the test. No argument, that's truth, and never a guess. I'm a teacher, I'm schooling about the finesse. Hey, who in the nation above all the rest? Cam Steven, ask all my peers and I bet they say bet. Cam was a star with the ball and that is the truth. Huh? Been seeing Charlotte Purdue, Kentucky and Oklahoma too. All wanted this top recruit, power forward that score like a two. No one can stop what he do, that man can really hoop. Cam Stevens, you know I'm the best. Number one player ain't never been less. Cam Stevens, you know I'm the best. Number one player ain't never been less. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Now you wow. Wow. <laughs> That's goosebumps right there. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, appreciate I'm gonna send it that. to you too. We done. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that, man. Uh it's just a lot of hard work, man. Like I said, to work so hard in high school and to be declared ineligible because, you know, your high school didn't do their part. You know, they prepared us and all that. But um, I don't know if it was before me or, or what. They hadn't had a lot of players go D1. But um, I ended I don't know if a lot of people know me. I ended up sitting out, sitting a year out at Purdue because um, Southside didn't send my – paperwork into the clearinghouse until may of my senior year oh no i didn't know wow that hurts yeah, so you know oh. you know your your paperwork your all your your transcripts everything should be sent in no later than your junior year then if there's any discrepancies you got a whole year to figure it out oh so i didn't i was wow. declared ineligible because i took a class and nice i took uh Applied economics, applied geometry, and because they had the word applied on it, the NCAA took it as a lesser course, but that was just um, the name. That the was terminology just the name for the class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't enough time to iron out the details, I guess, get to see what the, what the books held and all that. But yeah, man, it was, you know, it was frustrating to sit out and then 
I want to say right at the end of April, I lost my grandmother to cancer. Then a week uh -huh. later, week later, we lost my grandfather who had been my father. And so, man, for a <laughs> while, man, I was turned off for basketball. So it was, you know, maybe three, four months. And then, you know, the realization of being declared ineligible, you know, I was I was embarrassed. I was hurt. You know, yeah. I was lost. Um, and it was just, you know, a combination of things. And so I had to fight and find my way back and learn to love the game again, you know. Wow. But I did. And, you know, like I said, I feel like I had a decent, pretty successful career. Like you said, uh, Sweet 16 at Purdue. Uh, Final Four in JUCO at Vincennes. Um, first round, first and second round at uh, Charlotte. So three of my four years, I played in a tournament. <laughs> That's dope, man. You know, right, started uh, so you know I had like I said I had a I had a great run. I had fun. I, I met some great players, great friends. Like I said, and not to sell yourself short, man, you were. Uh, you were one of the strongest, hard-nosed young kids coming through there, man. So, so <laughs> to, to, to give you your flowers, boy, you you played hard, and we we had great battles, you know. Hey, man, yeah, talk I, about I, I, I didn't know y'all was hazing me, man. Remember that yeah. I got in the fight with Tony Mayfield? Can you tell the story about when I got in the fight with – do you remember me getting in the fight with Tony Mayfield? I, I remember, but I, I don't, man, because it, it was like – it was – it was a blur. I never. Now that you brought it up, I do remember it. And Coach ran in there naked. <laughs> so, uh, Tone, Tone was a dog, man. Tone, you know, and, and Tone was old school, man. Tone was, you know, Milwaukee's finest OG. He was, he, he was, he was hard nosed, man. Tone ain't play that, man. He just, you know, sometimes like the bridge between the the older players, the young players, man. The message was kind of misconstrued. You know, because we 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 were all dogs. We didn't want nobody talking to us in any kind of way. And just <laughs> just through the spirit of competition, man, we would uh, you know, a couple elbows get thrown. You know, some things may have been said. Hell, me and uh Cardinal kind of bumped a few times in practice. I think I think everybody bumped with Cardinal. Though, everybody, you know. <laughs> But it, it was love, man. Like I said, I love, really? playing, I love playing with you. I love playing, you know, the McQuays, rest in peace, yes. Gary, uh, hey, Gator. I always tell people, if we all would have stayed together, we at least would have made it to a Final Four. What's your thoughts on that, man? I, I agree, man. I agree. I Like I said, um, I felt like that summer after that year, if I would have, you know, been a been an adult about the situation and like I ended up I stopped going to class at Purdue because it would be times where coach coach Katie wouldn't play me because I would always try to go home and be with my daughter you know so me being young you know I ended up you know I could have handled that situation differently been probably been more verbal about my purpose and trying to get some understanding but I stopped going to class man thinking I'm gonna hurt him and I only hurt myself. So, but the shape I was in after the season, because that year before when I sat out, I didn't really, you know, when you was a prop 48, you couldn't practice with the team, you couldn't work out with the team, you could only do things on your own. Yeah. And you know, if you anybody knows, nobody works out on their own like they would with the team. Team correct. So, yeah. so that just that that shape I got in, because I don't know if you remember. We couldn't play at IAF. We couldn't play any basketball. We just had to lift weights and work out. And so that yeah. shape that I got in, and then I had to go, I ended up flunking out and going down to Vincennes. But I, I, like you said, I do feel like had I had consistent time there, it would have been amazing. Oh, you know, especially, yeah. Especially to play with, you know, you would have been a year older, Maynard a year older. Yep. Big time. Uh, been – Jay Cool, Cardinal, uh, yep. CJ Cunningham, everybody senior year. Man. So I think I, I think it could it would have been special because those those guys were true players, hoopers, yep. gym rats. You know, we yep. all love the game. So, you know, it's a lot of reflection and what ifs on on what it what my career could have been, A, not sitting out a year if things would have worked out and and B just staying there all four years. For real, man. 
Dang, I wish I could keep talking my break over. I gotta go get the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we <laughs> gonna have do to do it. You wanna do a part two, man? Oh, I'm all for it. All right, good, man. Yeah, we gotta continue this. But I'll send you that song, but I gotta go get my kids for lunch from lunch. <laughs> all right, yep. Yeah. Send me that uh that little clip too, man. I'll show the kids. Yeah, I'm good. All right, Cam. Good talking to you, man. Always well, bro. Love.